Truth strikes back with a 10th round TKO win over WBA welterweight world champion Jordanis Ugas, crowning Errol Spence Jr. the WBC IBF WBA world champion in the 147 pound division. Hey ringside, what is going on? This is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer, and welcome back to Ringside Stories. Or if you're new, we make content regarding boxing through many documentaries, previews, takeaways, and much more. So if you enjoy that type of content, feel free to subscribe thumbs up and hit that notification bell for the latest day on ringside stories thanks so much for your support in advance and welcome to the channel errol spence jr's comeback turned some heads in the boxing world as he won in a dominant fashion over now former wba super world champion jordanis ugas today we're talking about five things on how good errol spence jr really is at the moment let's get into it number one bounce back. Now many people will have argued the veracity of Errol Spence's detached retina in the summer of 2021, which forced Spence to pull out of the Manny Pacquiao fight. What is undeniable is the mere miracle of Errol Spence Jr. surviving that car accident by the most high's grace. Overnight, as a Ferrari flipped on a Dallas street, in that car was Errol Spence Jr. He's the boxing champion from DeSoto. Spence survived the crash, but is in rough shape at a Dallas hospital right now. You can see the white sports cars start flipping and barely miss a light pole as it traveled across lanes into oncoming traffic before landing on the other side of Riverfront Boulevard. Police say Earl Spence Jr. was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected from the vehicle. Witnesses told police Spence was conscious when he was taken to Methodist Hospital where he has broken teeth among other injuries. What was the extent of your injuries as far as your facial injuries, your teeth, everything? Um, my rib was just sore, like my whole body was just sore, you know, it was just a, you know, I guess a miracle from God. And, um, you know, he really protected me during an accident because I mean, anybody else would probably have been killed, so, you know, it was just a blessing from God. Spence's first fight after that car accident against Danny Garcia in December of 2020, of course, saw some caution from Errol, yet looked relatively fresh. However, against Jordanes Ugas, Errol Spence looked great with arguably his best performance of his career so far. Number two, great win, top performance. After a timid opening round with Jordanes Ugas arguably won, Spence started controlling the real estate in the pocket with his signature body body shots, using the Cuban for target practice. Overall, Errol Spence Jr. showed good rhythm, fairly good reflexes, firing off a laser lead left. This is the Errol Spence Jr. moving forward. He will be a handful for many of today's top welterweights. Stephen A, he's going to rearrange your face. Listen, this man is not just going in here and winning fights. This man is putting people in the hospital. Ugas was in the hospital. Kel Brooks yeah, went into the, the hospital. Bone. Did you see their face? Yeah. Okay, yes. I, I wanted a battle. I couldn't see from the eye. The referee stopped the fight, but I wanted to keep going till the end. It's not so much just the swelling, because just with this degree of swelling, you're not going to be able to let light transmit into the eye. It's more so the concern for the bones being fractured and how that can affect the integrity and the health of the eye. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here, I've highlighted those bones that make up the orbit and specifically this area right here, that bump, that's that malar eminence, that zygomatic process. That's that area where we see that contour that looks like it's flattened on the right side of Ugas's face. Obviously the right decision was made here because even after the fight, Ugas himself said that he was unable to see out of that right eye. Well, Spencer, on the other hand, he looked strong, he looked fit, he looked in shape. Uh, didn't really start the way I expected him to. I think that that was in large part because of Ugas certainly finished the way I expected him. Ugas had no killer instinct. Anybody else would try to knock him out. Something like that happened. So. I mean, it's, it's cool to be nice and all, but at the end of the game, it's boxing. You know, you gotta, you gotta check yourself at all times. Number three, where was your Dennis Ugas? Now, characteristically, your Dennis Ugas works off the counter, and for the first few rounds, the Cubans seemed to be in the fight, arguably winning some rounds, according to some. Entering the mid rounds, however, your Dennis Ugas just stopped fighting. You'd think the experience Ugas gained fighting Manny Pacquiao would have fueled or even equipped the Cuban to pose a bigger threat to Errol Spence Jr. than what unfolded on Saturday, April 16, 2022. The straight right, which conventionally is the most most potent weapon against the southpaw, certainly against Manny Pacquiao, against Errol Spence Jr. Ugas didn't throw it. Ugas awkwardness and footwork which threw off Sean Porter and also was highly effective against Pacquiao, against Errol Spence just 
wasn't there. As a matter of fact, during the mid rounds, Jordanes Ugas uncharacteristically was content to stay in front of Harold Spence Jr., allowing himself to get teed off, not making any adjustments, which was surprising having a top trainer in Ishmael Salas in Ugas' corner. Round six, a round the Cuban won. See, he thought, well, are you gonna stop this and get the mouthpiece? So the mouthpiece would come out from this kind of right up. He will get nailed by a right hand by Ugas. Wins about Reminiscent of 2011 Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Victor Ortiz when the then WBC welterweight champion was headbutting Money May excessively. I hit him with a left hook right hand and that ended the bout. We judge gloves, we back to fight hook, right hand, and that's all she wrote. And um, it's protect yourself at all times. And Floyd Mayweather Jr. was absolutely correct. Jordanes Ugas was granted a Victor Ortiz-esque opportunity. However, unlike Mayweather, Ugas did little to nothing and when he got Spence hurt, Uga showed absolutely no urgency for no apparent reason. Like looking off and looking for my mouthpiece and then, you know, I get punched like three times. So, you know, that was my fault too because you put to protect yourself at all times. So, you know. Standing right in front of each other, that right hand. This should have been ruled a knockdown as the ropes clearly kept Errol Spence Jr. up. What followed was some questionable refereeing, which certainly helped Spence recover. It would have been interesting to see how Errol Spence Jr. would have dealt with that type of adversity. Now, some people will argue whether the fix for Spence versus Ugas was in, and that is speculation. The referee, however, did make some questionable decisions to say at least, but Ugas failed to capitalize when he got his golden opportunity to turn or fight around or maybe even stop the fight. And regardless whether there was a fix in, Jordanes Ugas allowed himself to get beat up for the remainder of the fight. Number 4 elite welterweight. If this was the 80s or 90s, Errol Spence Jr. would have been the undisputed welterweight world champion. He is now undefeated in 28 fights with 22 wins by way of stoppage. Spence just won his third world championship belt from as many world champions. He took the IBF title from an in his prime Cal Brook who came off a loss to Gennady Golovkin back in 2016, yet as a welterweight was undefeated. And Errol Spence Jr. becomes a world champion. Spence successfully unified against then WBC world champion Sean Porter in a tough contest via close split decision. Porter, who prior to that fight kept his belt by defeating Jordanes Ugas, and Spence just convincingly beat that same Ugas, who came off his career defying win over all time great Manny Pacquiao, legitimizing his WBA Super World title at welterweight. It must be said, Spence doesn't have the sexiest resume as is, and as talented as he is, critical minds may say they would have expected more at this point in his career from someone who's carrying around his moniker. However, so far the truth has not been proven wrong, who with all of the ups and downs in the last half a decade just came off arguably his best performance to date against the third reigning world champion, which makes Errol Spence Jr. the current undefeated three belt unified champion of the world and an elite fighter in today's welterweight division. Number 5 Everybody know who I want next. I want Terry Crawford next. <laughs> That's the fight that I want. That's the fight everybody else wants. Like I said, I'm going to get these straps and I'm going to go over there and take it to. The ultimate question, however, how will this version of Errol Spence Jr. fare against a prime and undefeated three-weight world champion and the current WBO world champion at 147, Terrence Crawford? Now, we know what happened in the past. Me and Terrence Crawford did side of the street. He's just signed with ESPN. I don't fight for ESPN. I fight for Showtime with Fox. Bob couldn't secure me. The Spence fight when I was with him. So how you gonna secure me the Spence fight when I'm not with him? So I'm moving forward with my career right now and I wish everybody the best. Since Terrence Crawford is a promotional free agent, that other side of the street talk does not apply as of today. Errol Spence was right there watching this fight. As soon as this stoppage happened, he walked out. What was your message to Errol Spence tonight? He was at my fight. Now that boy said he wasn't gonna never be at my fights, but now he at my fights. You see what I did, you know, compared to what he did. Who number one in the welterweight division now? Oh, oh, okay, okay. I love it. 
I'm sure after the Jordanes Ugas beatdown, more boxing fans will make a case for the unified welterweight world champion. But will it be enough to beat Terrence Bud Crawford? If you want to see a Spence versus Crawford breakdown, let's get today's episode to 200 likes and I will drop the Spence versus Crawford matchup ASAP. Although Terrence Crawford has a good resume and I personally think he's a Hall of Famer as is, a win over Errol Spence Jr. would without a doubt be his signature win that Crawford lacks. Same goes for Spence, by the way. Stylistically, Spence versus Crawford would be mighty interesting. You have the natural bigger man who is physically strong, a potent body puncher. Missed with the counter right hand. Here goes that body shot. He is standing in front of Ugas right now and bringing the fight. Who can box yet at the same time be slick in the pocket versus a complete fighter who is ambidextrous, power in both hands, who has a superb boxing IQ and is proven to be an elite level talent amongst elite level talent. Coming forward and firing at Crawford for the moment. There's the overhand right and another combination. Beautiful work. How good is Errol Spence Jr? I guess we'll find out when Spence steps through the ropes with Crawford so we can hopefully welcome the first undisputed welterweight champion of the world since Zab Super Judah in January of 2006. The winner of Spence vs Crawford for all the belts would be the first undisputed welterweight world champion in the four belt era. That's all future talk for now. Props to Errol Spence Jr for a great performance and a great win being the first to ever stop Jordanes Ugas. Here's just my thoughts. What are yours? Let us know in the comments below and let us also know who you'd be picking if Errol Spence Jr. would fight Terrence Crawford today. If you enjoy this kind of content and you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. It helps the channel out a lot, i.e. inspire us to make more quality content for y'all. As always, thank you so much for your support and welcome to Ringside Stories. Now, if you've done that already, you're amazing. We already know that you are the true undisputed world champion. Till next time, Ringsiders, this is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer with Ringside Stories. Thanks for watching and have a legendary day. Dang!